I first want to thank everyone in this room. Uh, you all have an investment in Roswell. You're all part of making this city great. And so thank you for being Roswell citizens. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, where we are today and uh, what to expect in 2017. And we'll talk about what I believe are Roswell's three biggest challenges. I do not have any PowerPoints, but I do have some beautiful slides. Uh, and uh, as you're watching these, look for the, see if you can pick out the uh, transportation art projects. There, we'll, we'll have a quiz later on about that. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, in the 68 years that I have been a resident of Roswell, things have not been in a better condition than they are today. Uh, on a personal level, that's because of my wife, Claudia. She's, she spoils me and she, she's, uh, she's the love of my life. But on a city level, we are accomplishing great things. We're in a great place. Uh, let's talk about what's new for 2016, 2017. Parks, uh, we just acquired 25 acres on Chafin Road for an athletic field. We're actively negotiating a land on Holcomb Bridge Road for a passive park and a trail. And uh, today we have over 1,100 acres of parkland in the city of Roswell. Now to put that in, per in perspective, the fair market value of the parkland in the city of Roswell is over $1 billion which is tremendous for a small town like this. Uh, and I have to thank uh, my Recreation Commission and Bill Cox, uh, the National Park Service for that. I had to count 100 acres of, of parkland to get over 1,000. We were at 996 acres without the National Park Service land, but if I count the National Park Service land, it brings me up to 1,100 acres. Uh, we're in the golden age of trails in, in Atlanta. Uh, the Beltline with two miles is getting a lot of publicity. We have 56 miles of trails in the city of Roswell. This year, we just opened a new boardwalk along the Chattahoochee River. I will tell you that it's the prettiest place to view the, the river anywhere along the Chattahoochee River. And I paddled it from, from, Lake, Lanier, from Lake Lanier down and from uh, the mountains down. So it's that, that bridge, the boardwalk above the Chattahoochee Nature Center, is an incredibly beautiful location. If you haven't been there, you need to go. Uh, we'll be opening up a new trail on Hogwaller Creek behind the new elementary school this year. We're acquiring right away for a trail from along Folk Hiller Creek from Sun Valley to Old Roswell Road, hoping to open it this year. Uh, Roswell and Sandy Springs are working on a pedestrian bridge uh, across the Chattahoochee River to eventually link us to uh, Buckhead and then on to the Beltline. Uh, we got that grant, uh, to tell you, this is a federal grant, to, to tell you about federal grants, we got this grant when Johnny Isaacson was a congressman. And, but we're about, to, we're about to fill it out. But the federal grants is a whole other story which I'm not going to cover today. Uh, the city council is very close to agreeing upon a city green to connect City Hall to Canton Street. We're down to the details. We're gonna see that happen soon. We just finished acquiring all of the right of way for the alley east of Canton Street. Uh, we're gonna be creating a new pedestrian street just off of Canton Street for a whole nother uh, area for Canton Street stores and businesses. In April, we'll be opening fire station number four on Old Alabama Road, south of Holcomb Ridge Road. The Roswell Arts Foundation is up and running. Uh, Steve talked a little bit about that, but the Roswell Arts Foundation has, from the last, from the Arts Around project in 2016, with the help of the business community, we acquired two of the sculptures, which are now gonna become a permanent installation. The new fire station has an installation, and this year, we're gonna have another Art Around Roswell, sponsored by private businesses with 10 sculptures. <coughs> Some of these are showing up on these slides. Transportation, that's where things are really happening. Uh, I have to thank my council for their, their solid support for transportation and Brandon Beach and Betty Price in the state of Georgia for helping us with that. Uh, but primarily I have to thank you, the taxpayers, for voting for the t -SPLOS, which is gonna raise over nine, $90 million for Roswell over the, first, over the next five years. 
In this year, we see, hope to have the Henry House Roundabout completed. That's a GDOT project. <coughs> We're acquiring a right away for Hart's Gravel Road for a roundabout and some, some complete street connections. We're connecting Sun Valley from Mansell to Highway 9. That'll be a whole new road in the city of Roswell. GDOT is reviewing uh, plans for South Atlanta Street and the, uh, the, the Gateway Project, which will expand from three lanes to four, that, uh, that the suicide lanes. And this week, the council approved the first expenditure of T-SPLOS funds. So we're off and running with T-SPLOS. <clears throat> want to talk about, Steve talked about the numbers. I'll be real quick. City-owned assets, $326 million. Of that $326 million, there's $100 million in cash and monies invested in the city of Roswell. On the other side of the ledger, we've got only $70 million worth of debt, so the city is in great financial situation, which is why we continue to maintain a AAA bond rating. If you bring me, this is my wife, Claudia. Let's have a hand for Claudia. She's the reason I have to be here. Everybody wants to know about the 2017 budget. The question is, are we going to see a property tax increase? Well, I can tell you for the probably the 12th year in a row, I'm not sure exactly, we're not going to see a property tax rate increase this year. We are going to see a lot of new programs. Uh, we're talking about adding a city architect or a city planner. We're talking about creating a new commission to manage our historic assets. So now I want to turn to the three challenges. I think the three challenges that Roswell are facing is traffic congestion, <coughs> waning demand for our retail centers and blighted shopping centers, and the last one is some large apartment complexes, which, as mayor, I don't usually say this, are not safe places to live, but we're going to address those problems. So let's talk about the first challenge, transportation. The first term I was elected, I said, I'm not going to work on transportation. It takes five years for a transportation project. After four years, i got to run again. I'm not going to have anything to show for it. Well, that was 20 years ago. I have no excuses right now. But for the traffic congestion, we finally have a real solution. And the solution that was given to you, Roswell, by you, the taxpayers, when you approved that three-quarter penny sales tax, which gives us the $90 million to spend on transportation. Among the improvements you're going to be seeing is that, that South Atlanta Street project going to four lanes. Rucker Road connecting to Alpharetta. We're designing and rebuilding Oakland Bridge Road 400 interchange. We're putting a new bridge over 400 called the Big Creek Parkway. The biggest project, though, is thanks to Brandon Beach and Betty Price. That is, in five years, we're going to have managed lanes on 400. When I say managed lanes, there are going to be four additional lanes, two in each direction. There'll be toll roads, but they will get you up and down that road without those horrendous delays we're seeing. I just wish they were here now. But that's five years off. That's as soon as we can get those done. <clears throat> we're going to see in addition to improving existing roads, we're going to be putting in new streets. Uh, people wonder why we have traffic congestion so bad. I'll explain it to you this way. In 1940, we had more bridges across the Chattahoochee River than we do today. And our population was a fraction of what it is today. When Roswell had 2,500 people, we had more arterial, we had the same number of arterial roads as we do today. We have not built any new roads other than 400. We've only expanded those. We've got to create new connections where it's not necessary to cut through neighborhoods, and we're looking for those every chance we get. Sun Valley is one of those connections. The Big Creek Parkway is one of those connections. And we're talking about the Mansell Loop, extending Mansell from uh, Highway 92 on down to Highway 9. So we're looking for new connections wherever we can do it without cutting through neighborhoods. Sidewalks and trails, we've got more of those to come. With this T-SPLOS money, we're going to be developing complete streets. All new streets will have sidewalks. Where possible, we're going to include uh, bike lanes and multi-purpose trails. 
So where's my mini, where's, I asked people to check for which of these were the, the transportation art. Do you have my transportation art slide? Just take a minute. That's not it. <laughs> there it is. These are our, this, this, this came from our transportation department. Every time there's a signal box, you've got some silver metal box. We haven't rolled this out to council, but we're talking about, you know, art on our metal boxes in the city of Roswell. Attention to details. Public art. So where are our many roundabouts? We, we didn't find those. Anyway, the idea with a mini roundabout is where we have, there they are. Check that out for an engineer. This is incredible. Uh, this would be a hard surface. Uh, but it, but it is, as Steve Asenbrack explains it, rather than a, a speed bump, which is horizontal deflection, de deflection to slow people down, we all hate those things. Now, if you'll just have to take a little dodge, it will also slow you down with the same impact. So we're going to be trying to a pilot program with some, some, some many roundabouts, but adding some art to it. So we talked about the, the uh, a little, little more about trails. The Atlanta Regional Commission just adopted a regional trail plan. We're going to be having, Atlanta Regional Commission is going to have $7 million a year to, come, to do trails. So in my lifetime, I expect to have a trail along 400 to Buckhead <coughs> and onto the Beltline. And I expect we're meeting with Cobb County, and I hope to have our river trail connect all the way to the Silver Comet. So one day you should be able to ride from Forsyth through Roswell to, to a downtown Atlanta or onto uh, uh, Alabama. So it's a, it's a great place for trails. Now, we passed a three-quarter transportation tax on the T-SPLOS. We left a quarter penny. We reserved that quarter penny with the potential for spending it on transit. Yesterday, with Dick Anderson's help and Liz Hausman's help and Bob Ellis's help, our county commissioners and county administrator, all the mayors met, and we agreed to move forward with planning for North Bolton public tra transportation. Somebody said, well, that, what does that look like? We're starting with a blank piece of paper, people. We're going to say what works. We're going to hear from the public, hear from the experts, but we're going to develop a public transportation plan that works for North Fulton. And once we come up with a good plan, then we'll look at funding and governance. What I want to tell you about public transportation, it's not just transportation. Fulton County took us on a trip to uh, Plano, Texas, last week. And what we've discovered from Plano, Texas was the light rail, they're 20 miles north of Dallas, just as we're 20 miles north of Atlanta. It's sort of like the, it's like North Fulton, the, the Plano, Texas is about the size of North Fulton County. That has totally transformed that community. It's brought in regional headquarters, including Toyota North America. But only 5% of the public travels on that light rail. So the point is, is light rail is a transportation project, but even more important, it's an economic development project and, and transform Plano and can transform North Fulton County. Not that we're not doing very well, but if we continue to rely upon 400, even with these managed lanes, eventually we're gonna be choked. We've got a plan for the future and planning for transit is 10 years off. So we're gonna be developing a plan. Second challenge, talked about transportation. Second challenge, waning demand for retail stores. We talked about, uh, we've got a new company here about internet sales. Internet sales, as you all know, the retail market is not growing. Uh, in Roswell, we recently, there was an announcement that Kohl's and Target were thinking about leaving Roswell because there's no demand. That's not the tip of the iceberg, that is the iceberg. We're losing, we've got to find, what do we do with these emptying retail shopping centers? We cannot convert them to new retail. It's not there, it's gone to the internet. We've got to do something. Well, we're working on a solution right now. The Downtown Development Authority is looking at converting 
the old Southern Skillet Shopping Center into a walkable community. Now, let's talk about walkable neighborhoods here in a minute. My definition of a walkable neighborhood is a neighborhood where it's not necessary to get into a car, to go to, to buy groceries, to go to a restaurant, to go to work. In a walkable neighborhood, a car is optional. Residents and businesses are in close community, in proximity. People are walking down the street and get to know each other. It creates a strong sense of community. Walkable neighborhoods are healthy for communities. They create a sense of community. We're going to, and there, and we know in Roswell there is a very strong demand for walkable communities. Canton Street is becoming a walkable community. You cannot find affordable housing on Canton Street. You can't even afford reasonable price housing on Canton Street. Canton Street is where people want to move because it's a walkable community. We have a tremendous demand and a very small supply, which tells us if you're a businessman, that's where you need to be furnishing the supply to meet that demand. We've got in our commercial corridors these blighted shopping centers, and can we convert those to walkable communities, to mixed-use projects? The DDA is doing that right now. They have six proposals on the table. We're going to, they're going to try to pick the best one to transform that corridor into a walkable neighborhood just across the street from Canton Street. Do I have, uh, who have I got, the, Lonnie, who have I got the DDA here? Lonnie Mims, he sort of half serves. Stand up, Ralph, stand up. There we go, let's have a hand for the DDA, they're doing a great job. So that's where I think we need to go. The biggest challenge, the solution to the challenge of waning retail and blighted shopping centers is to convert those into mixed-use projects and to convert those neighborhoods into walkable communities. And we hope that the Southern Skillet redevelopment becomes a model for those projects. Third challenge, the toughest. We've got some large apartment complexes in Roswell, which do afford affordable housing to our citizens. But many of these are unsafe and not good places for family to live. Brian Hansford, our judge, will tell you that. Claudia's housekeeper, when she comes to work and, and, and help Claudia out, she brings her two young boys with her. The reason she brings her two young boys with her to my house is because they have no safe to pl place to play in their, their apartment neighborhood. That is not acceptable for the city of Roswell. The city has looked at what can we do with these, these unsafe neighborhoods. And the idea was, my first idea, and the first thing we looked at, well, maybe we can redevelop these. Let's put something new in there. But there are two problems with that. Number one is, is you lose affordable housing. Number two is, if you're going to redevelop these apartment complexes, which are fully leased and money machines, you're going to have to develop at a very high density. A density, a residential density of which is not acceptable to the citizens of Roswell. So I don't think that solution works. So what is the solution to these apartment complexes? Well, folks, I woke up and said it's the same solution that there is to the waning retail development and what do we do about our old shopping centers. What we've got to do is to retrofit these apartment complexes to make them walkable neighborhoods that are desirable, safe places to live. These apartment complexes were developed when everybody drove. I checked before I came over here on the way to coming to make this speech. I drove into those apartment complexes behind Red Lobster. And folks, here's the first thing I noticed. Well, the first thing you know, these people all walk to where they go. They walk to the stores and they walk to wherever they get to in that community. But there are no sidewalks coming out of those communities. Those communities are disconnected from the city. They were built for cars, but they need to be redesigned for people to become walkable communities. 
So is there anything we can do to make these neighborhoods, these apartment neighborhoods safer and more family friendly? Well, if we can make them into walkable communities. We can create sidewalks. We can encourage more public transit so that people do not have to have a car to get to, to their job or everywhere they go and will not add to the traffic. Uh, we can do things, I mean, like the Atlanta Hotel. I, I know nobody's from the Atlanta Hotel here, right? <laughs> our judge will tell you that there, and our chief of police will tell you that there's more crime at the Atlanta Hotel than, than, than per square foot, or maybe double the crime per square foot than anywhere else in the city of Roswell. Wouldn't it be great if we could acquire that property and turn it into a community center for kids, for after school programs, so that they would have a safe place to stay? We've got to do something about our apartment complexes, redeveloping them into high rises is not politically acceptable. So I think we can retrofit these and make these places that become walkable communities, which are in high demand, which create a sense of community which become a safer place, a place of community, a place with productive citizens. And these apartment complexes and these strip centers in our commercial corridors have long existed with adjacent neighborhoods. If we can convert them into walkable communities, they will not just coexist, they will strengthen our community. So if we're going to have a better community, if we're going to continue to advance, we need to address the blighted shopping centers. We need to address obsolete apartment complexes which do not allow for walking and are unsafe. If we set our mind to it, we can certainly do that. Now, again, I am not proposing high-rises or even mid-rise buildings. I don't see high-rise buildings anywhere in Roswell's future, anywhere. Roswell's choice is not between maintaining our existing neighborhoods or redeveloping at higher density. That's a false choice. Our choice is between walkable neighborhoods in our commercial corridors to replace our blighted shopping centers and our old apartment complexes or continuing to live with those blighted properties. We have a choice to make. We have solutions. We can move forward if we have the political will. So those are my three problems and my three solutions. I think I've got a council that can get there. I've got the citizens who want to see us become a better community. And we have the money and we have the political will. We can get this job done. So that pretty much wraps up my speech before we Okay. All right, I don't have it here. All right, so I was going to do a very dramatic presentation. You saw the, the video. Last week, Roswell was the first big city to win the Walk Live Community, Walk Live, the uh, Live Work Play Award. So let's have a hand for all the folks who made that up. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank everybody for their investment in Roswell. I want to remind the folks who, uh, who can make it, we've got a revitalization meeting uh, February 1st at East Roswell Park to talk about uh, transform, converting these old shopping centers into something new. Oh, well, there it is. Kay, come on up here. <laughs> so there it is. It is the Live Work Play Award. And I'm extremely proud of this. When I was elected as mayor, it was my goal to make Roswell a, the best place to live in Georgia. And everything I have done and my entire focus has been on that. And after 19 years in office and a lot of other mayors saying that they're the best place to live, work, and play in Roswell, Roswell was the first to get this award. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is an honor because what we do have and what we truly continue to work on is a great place to live, work, and play. 
and that is really what we do every day. So thank you to our partners that are in the room, to the business community, to the, the nonprofit community, to our elected leaders. We've got challenges, but we can overcome them. We've got a bright future. And as I always say, it's a great day to do business in Roswell, Georgia. So go do business. <laughs>